Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing and Reviews and How To, and today we're going to be discussing Kernel Error 41. Basically, your system is rebooting without shutting down cleanly first. Lots of reasons why it happens, some things you may have overlooked, and uh, some of them might be on the table right now. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're we'll talking about the error number 41, or kernel error 41, or basically your system has rebooted without shutting down cleanly, first of all. Essentially, a lot of you have probably seen this because your system has blue screen to death, or possibly if you're using Windows 11, a black screen to death. It is a very, very difficult thing to actually work out what is going on or diagnose in your PC. The reason behind it is because the actual, the real reason on it is very, very wide depth. There can be many things which cause it, amongst others there are things like your CPU, your RAM, your motherboard, your power supply, your drivers, the windows, errors, etc, etc. There are an absolute ton of things which can cause this error, because it is basically saying, yes, your system has not shut down cleanly before restarting. It could be caused by many things. Software is one of those things which is relatively easy to look for. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about things that I've done personally recently to diagnose the problem on my own system, some of the mistakes I've made in the diagnosis, and some of the kind of revelations that I found actually going through it step by step, and actually thinking slightly more outside the box than I normally would do. So hopefully you'll get some ideas of things that you can try and diagnose on your own system. Now I'll say straight away, before you get too far into this video, this is not a fix all video. This is just gonna give you some ideas of things you can look at on your own system to try and resolve problems with random crashing, the kernel error 41, etc., etc. We'll be taking a look at my Windows PC. We'll take a look at a working PC as well so you can see what things should look like and yeah, all those kinds of tips and tricks. So stay tuned and you will hopefully learn something from this. You may not fix your system, but certainly you'll be armed with a little bit more diagnostic skill to hopefully rectify your problems. So looking at things we've got on the desk, first of all, so we've got my two terabyte NVMe drive. Now this was what I initially thought was the problem. Now to go over and give you some of the background, obviously I have a YouTube channel, so we do video editing. Now I was finding that Adobe Premiere was crashing and probably some of you are screaming out now, yeah, Mike, that isn't an unusual thing. And no, it isn't. But for systems to be kind of working normally, no updates, no changes, and then all of a sudden to start crashing, it does make you start wondering. And also I was finding a very weird problem where I would play Far Cry 6 just after it came out and it was crashing. Well, it wasn't technically crashing. Essentially the rest of the entire system would crash yet the game would carry on. So my event logs would actually stop maybe an hour, maybe two hours earlier than I'm actually finishing playing the game. The only reason I knew the system had actually crashed is because I would click on escape to the main menu or escape to windows and whilst doing that, it would just go to a black screen, it would freeze, I'd press the number lock key on the keyboard and it wouldn't change. So the system had completely frozen, although the game had been completely playable for the last God knows how many hours. So it's a really, really weird problem. The fact that it wasn't the game that was crashing, it was the entire system that was crashing kind of around it. Now I did investigate the event logs, which we'll take a look at on the PC behind me shortly, and it was coming up with that usual thing. Lots of error messages, but one which kept on coming up time and time again was the kernel 41 or that kind of clean reboot status. So basically the system shut down without being turned off properly. This can happen if you wanna generate the problem for yourself or the error code for yourself. It's very easy to do. Literally just when you're using your PC, just press the reset button. I suggest not doing this, but if you wanna see how to recreate it, essentially press the reset button whilst the PC is on and it will generate that fault code because you've essentially turned the PC off without shutting down all the programs cleanly. Hopefully this is kind of making sense and you can understand how it's working. So how does this relate to the system? Now again, it can be caused by many things, things like if you've overclocked your processor, it can cause a crash, which could then trigger that fault code. RAM, if you've got your XMP settings just slightly off, then that can also cause it too. So there's a lot of things which can cause it. I was finding that I was getting lots of errors on my NVMe drive, which led me to believe that this drive was actually faulty, at which point I replaced it with another drive and the problem it still existed. I was still getting data errors on the drive, all that kind of stuff. So it was a really weird problem. One of the things that I didn't try, and this is essentially how I kind of fixed the problem in the end, is I didn't think it was my power supply. 
Now the power supply I've been using is this one here. This is the Silverstone Strider, the ST64F-GS to give it its correct name, which is a 650 watt gold rated power supply with a really good guarantee, reviewed very well, etc, etc. And I've been using it for a good few years. And because it was an expensive power supply, it was the last thing on my mind. It was always the thing I was thinking, it's going to be a component, it's going to be a driver, it's going to be a bit of software, it could be Adobe Premiere, it could be Far Cry 6, could be Windows 11. Lord knows there's a lot of issues with it. So it was a really difficult thing to diagnose. So the first thing I tried was to actually test the power supply. Now you can pick up things like this. This is a power supply tester. You can pick these up on Amazon, eBay, etc., etc. They're not overly expensive and they're quite handy for diagnostic purposes. Also, if you've got a power supply or a PC which won't boot at all or won't even turn on, of course, that is a really easy thing to test. Now, when I did plug it into this, most, if not all, of the actual voltages, the 12 volt rail, the 5 volt rail, and the 3.3 volt rail, all looked to be relatively normal. The thing that I didn't look at closely was the actual fluctuations, which sadly, this doesn't really show you because the power supply isn't on load. So what I did was installed a program called Hardware Monitor. Now it's a free piece of software and there's lots of other pieces of software which will do a very similar thing. There's Hardware Info 64. There's various ways of doing this so you can choose whichever piece of software you want. I will be putting links for the software in the video description so to make life easier for you, you can just go ahead and click on the links there to download the software. It's not a sponsored video in any way, shape or form. It's just, I'm just trying to be a bit helpful. But that was what I actually ended up doing in the end was to install Hardware Monitor I then ran the system for a little while, just as I would my normal daily routine with hardware monitor running in the background. And actually one thing which did surprise me when leaving it on like that, even with the system not being under load, I did notice when looking at the 12 volt, 5 volt and 3.3 volt rails, the 3.3 volt rail was actually dipping. And it was actually dipping quite a bit from 3.3 volts to at some points as low as 2.8 volts, which is, definitely not good for your system. You should find that pretty much all of the voltages should stay relatively stable. And the more stable they are, the better the system is gonna be, kind of in general. So your 12 volt rail, you'll normally find it'll be somewhere around the region of 12.08 volts, that sort of thing, slightly over 12 volts, and it should stay pretty stable. If you run some stress tests, such as Cinebench, or any of those kind of tests which put a load on the system, you should still see that the voltage rail should stay pretty much within tolerances. Now they can change a little bit. Anything more than maybe half a volt, I would certainly start investigating and looking at your power supply. So anyway, let's go over to the PC now. I'll show you what this actually looks like so you can get an idea of what you should be looking for. Okay, so this is my uh, desktop on my other streaming PC. Just uh, this is actually handier, so I'll show you what is going on. So I've already opened up the hardware monitor, which is running in the background, and also got the event viewer. So if you wanna see where the errors are, what you want to do is right click on the Windows flag, this is same for Windows 10 or 11, and then go up to Event Viewer. Now this will normally bring up the kind of user control thing, just click OK, and this is essentially what you'll be left with. So what we're going to be looking for is looking for the Windows logs. Now in the Windows logs you've got Application, Security, Setup, System and Forward Events. The two really which we're going to be looking at mostly here are going to be Application and also System. So as it pretty much tells you system is going to be system events and application is going to be software events. Now the two are obviously quite closely linked, but what you want to do is scroll down through and just look for anything with a red exclamation mark. Generally the ones with a triangle, warning triangle, are going to be absolutely fine, but just scroll down until you see something with a red exclamation. So here we go, there's one straight away and that is a certificate of services client. So it gives you the information at the bottom here, so in general it tells you what it is. But what you want to be looking for is your event log or the error log number 41. So this is going to be basically the system is rebooted without cleanly shutting down first. You can take a look at these things. They may point in the right direction of what your problem is if you get one, which is happening quite a lot. And in the system, again, if we go down through what we got here, so uh, that's just a binding to the transport, so you can ignore that. There's quite a few in there. If you've got a particularly ill system, you'll see there's gonna be a lot of these things. But the odd one or two isn't too bad. Again, it depends on your system and how stable it is. But this is where you wanna be looking. So just look in there for the event log, look for the event error code 41, and that will give you an idea of what is going on. You probably know that anyway from the blue screens of death messages. So using hardware monitor, and so this is CPU ID's hardware monitor, and at the top here, 
this is the motherboard. So this is registering your voltages which are going through the motherboard itself. Now these aren't really going to give you an idea if it is the motherboard or the power supply, but it certainly will point you in the right direction. So this is actually the voltages which are reported to the motherboard rather than the specific voltages in the power supply. But obviously the two are pretty well linked, so this should give you a good idea. Now, as you can see from the main ones we want here is the 12 volt, the plus 5 volt, and the plus 3.3. Now, as you can see, the plus 3.3 has been fluctuating a little bit. So we've got 3.384, as you can see there has actually changed in real time there as we're watching it. So you will see there's some slight fluctuations depending on what parts of the system are being accessed, etc, etc. Things like your CPU V core, that will fluctuate as well due to the way that precision boost overclocking works, that kind of thing. And going up to the 5 volt one. So the 5 volt rail, as we can see, is 5.04, 5.03 volts. The minimum we've seen on this rail is 4.96. So again, it's not a huge difference. It is still very close to that 5 volt figure. If this was dropping down any further, maybe 4.8, 4.7, that would certainly give me calls for concern on that particular rail. And also equally, if the voltages are going up and above 5 volts by quite a dramatic way, so if you've got maybe 5.1, then definitely something is going wrong with either your power supply or your voltage regulation on your motherboard. Our problem was 3.3, like I said, so at the moment 3.3 is pretty stable there, 3.38, 3.36 is the lowest we've seen, and the max is 3.39, so they're all within pretty good tolerances, but again, if this drops down to maybe 2.9 or 2.8 even, that would definitely be cause for concern and would potentially point to your power supply having an issue with it. So like I said earlier in the video, this isn't going to be the definitive thing. It isn't going to say, yes, this is what is going wrong with your PC. But certainly for a lot of people out there, depending on what your system is and specifications, if you're troubleshooting, if you've done all the usual things, like you've done all your Windows updates, you've updated your drivers, you've potentially used DDU to rectify any graphics card issues, if you want to find out how to use DDU, we've actually got a link, we'll put that in the video, or you can click up here to find that. That is actually quite a good one as well for graphics card errors, which can kind of be related to that reboot or crashing in games, that sort of thing. But this is more tailored towards the power supply and power, especially when it is that event manager. Another thing which you might find as well, which is a really weird one, is a faulty reset switch or a faulty power button on your case. So if you get to the point where all your voltages look absolutely fine, your temperatures all look fine as well, that's something else you can definitely investigate. Make sure your CPU is not getting too hot, make sure your VRMs aren't getting too hot. Basically have a quick scan across the system again. Hardware monitor or hardware info can tell you all those things. And actually most of those pieces of software, if there is any kind of trigger levels, they will actually highlight the text in red so it'll stand out like a sore thumb so definitely look out for those but i think really what the the thing is here if you are seeing massive voltage fluctuations on the 12 5 or 3.3 rails definitely consider taking a look at your power supply now again i would have never thought in a million years that my power supply would have been the problem it was probably one of the the sort of higher quality components in the pc but i think the moral of the story is it doesn't matter how expensive the part is or how long the warranty is or how good the brand is all components have a tendency to fail and for a power supply it's actually a really simple thing you can pick up something like this the Cylon 700 watt which actually would be a pretty much drop-in replacement for this it's obviously not a, as good a quality but voltage wise in well probably not voltage wise because it's slightly overrated the 700 watts but you get the general idea you can pick up another power supply this one costs about 15 pounds on a special offer on Black Friday so I could quite easily put this in the machine do the same sort of tests keeping on the voltages and if the voltages are stabilized then you know at least then there's an issue with the power supply. Chances are you can return it to the manufacturer under their lengthy warranties. Again, that's going to be down to the individual power supply. So I'm probably rambling a little bit too much now, but hopefully this has given you some idea of what to do. So if you are getting that error log where the system is essentially rebooting itself or you're blue screening and it's not shutting down cleanly, it isn't always going to be a software problem. It may not always be drivers. It's always worth taking a really close look at your voltages just to see if there's anything weird going on. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you for your diagnostic purposes. If it has, don't forget to give us a like. If you dislike the video in any way, let us know in the comment section what you disliked about it, and maybe we can improve as we go on. But I think that's for it for now. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.